In this video, I'll explain layer two broadcast traffic and how it impacts the performance of either a physical or a virtual switch. Now there can be a variety of different reasons that a virtual machine or physical machine generates a layer two broadcast. The most common reason is an ARP request, and I'm going to do a video on that as well. But let's just focus on what actually happens when a layer two broadcast is generated. Now with ethernet at layer two or IP at layer three, there are special addresses called broadcast addresses. And basically if you send a frame to the broadcast address of ethernet, that frame is going to be flooded to every single port. That's part of that layer two network. So let's take a look at our diagram here. And I've got a bunch of virtual machines, those little white blocks up at the top, those represent virtual or physical machines, doesn't really matter. And one of those virtual machines or physical machines sends a layer two broadcast to the physical switch. Well, what the physical switch is going to do is it is going to receive that frame, take a look at the destination Mac and the destination Mac address is a layer two broadcast address. So it will then forward that frame out every single port on that switch and every single machine will receive a copy, right? This is kind of like, I always equate this to, let's say you're shopping, right? You're at the grocery store or some department store and somebody comes over the PA system and says, please pay attention everybody the following license plate numbers left their lights on in the parking lot and everybody kind of stops and just waits for a moment and listens to hear if it's their car. Well, that's kind of like what a broadcast is. You're sending something out to everybody, but really only one person cares about it. Right. And, and that's kind of what ARP requests are like. And that's what a lot of broadcast traffic is like. So ideally we'd like to avoid this broadcast traffic as much as we possibly can, especially ARP requests. Now let's say for example, that our switch is actually connected to another switch as well. Maybe either a physical or virtual switch. Again, it doesn't really matter is connected to another switch via some sort of inner switch link. Maybe there's just an ethernet connection or a trunk port that connects these two switches together. Well, in that scenario, the broadcast will actually flow from one switch to another. This is all part of a layer two network. So if my broadcast is originated by a machine connected to the virtual switch on top, it'll also be passed to the switch on bottom. And again, every device connected to that switch will receive a copy of that layer two broadcast. Now let's make one more change to our topology here. Let's add a router and one more switch. And this switch is connected to the network via a router. So there's a router in between the two switches on the left and the switch on the right. What do you suppose happens to our layer two broadcast in this scenario? Well, the broadcast will be passed to that router. The router will receive that layer two broadcast because the router is also connected to that layer two network. However, that's the end of it. Right? The router does not ever pass layer two broadcast traffic out to other network segments. So that's kind of the limiting factor in our physical or virtual network to those layer two broadcasts is when they hit a router, they stop there. 